All right, it's Mr. Harper again, and I just wanted to do one more example of domain and range. Um, hopefully, I'm not beating a dead horse here, but <clears throat> so first thing I want to talk about is domain. And again, if you remember from uh, either the last video or one of the other videos, domain deals with how far left or right. And so again, you can see my kind of my shutters here. And so what I want to do is we want to ask ourselves what's the furthest left my function is and what's the furthest right so if I take this shutter here and I kind of follow my function to the furthest left point what I notice here is that we have a arrow and what the arrow tells me is that it keeps on going infinitely so if we think about it because of this arrow some people would be tempted to say well right here is my furthest left point but that's not true because of that arrow so anytime we have an arrow in sort of following a function we say that it goes to that infinity and in this case the left direction would be negative infinity so let me click my little thing here my domain then would start off at negative infinity now and let me say this anytime and I apologize for it being so messy anytime we have an infinity here we always want to put the parentheses never put a bracket around that and now we're going to do the same thing here with the other shutter so I'm going to come here and if I follow it along and try to figure out what's the furthest right point again someone would be tempted to say well right here is where it stops but it doesn't stop again because of that arrow so what this tells me is that it keeps going on till positive infinity so that tells me again my domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity another way to say that would be all real numbers but we're going to write it like this. Again, this is called interval notation. What this tells me here is that our domain is basically all real numbers. Another way to say that is from negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, so now let's look at our range. Our range is going to be a little bit different here. So again, we want to look at our lowest point to our highest point. So I'm going to take this. Again, if I follow my function to its lowest point, its lowest point is right here, which if we look, looks like it's about at negative 1. Now, I understand we don't have a point here, but anytime it looks like a function touches a, a, uh, a number here, we assume that it includes it. So here's what we're going to do. Because it goes all the way down to negative 1, just give me a second here, I'm getting used to this little tool I'm using. Since it goes down to negative 1, we're going to say, oh, I messed up. It goes down to negative 1, we're going to put a bracket. And again, that's because we're including negative 1 in our range. And again, it's not showing that we have a point here, but it is touching. So we want to make sure we include that. And then if we look at our range here for its highest point, again, we have these arrows here that are pointing upward. So that tells us it goes to positive infinity. So we're going to put positive infinity here. And again, always with the infinities, make sure you put the... Uh, parentheses here. So this would be my domain in interval notation and this would be my range. And again what this means is that every number from negative 1 to positive infinity including negative 1 again because we have that bracket here. If this was like maybe an open circle type deal we would have a parentheses here but again it's it's including negative 1 so we put a bracket all the way to positive infinity here. So again hopefully this helps if you have any more questions, please ask me in class to make a specific video. I would love to make another video. I enjoy this, and so hope you have a good day, and hope to see you tomorrow in class.